John McCauley from Deer Tick. Our latest uh, achievement has been this record called Negativity. It's pretty good, but you know, we'll make more. There's an expiration date on your excitement for the records that you make. And uh, you know, it's usually within a couple of months and I'm proud of this record that we made, but you know, it did come out in you know September and we're ready to uh, move on and get in the studio again and you know we're ready to create again. I think our our fan base for the most part I mean has learned not really to have any sort of expectations from us. We're just going to do what we want to do when we get on stage. And uh, that's, that's awful kind of them. You know, that's just the kind of band we are. And I think um, yeah, a good portion of our fan base is, you know, that's more what they want to see anyway. I think it's a really good thing for a band to have multiple faces, you know? I mean, all my favorite bands, even if they have like a lead singer, like still like, you know, Keith sings a couple of Rolling Stones songs. It's just fun, it, it breaks up the monotony of it, and it's always makes for a cool experience for the listener, I think. The Beatles, they really they didn't have a lead singer. It was, they were one of the first bands I ever listened to, and I really liked that about them, because like, I couldn't, it took me a few years to be able to tell them apart. I have been accused of singing a lot of things that I have not sang, thanks to the multiple lead singer thing. And I think it's funny. Swear me in. I'm pretty good at making promises. I met Hardy five or six years ago. This was when we were using MySpace. I had a message in my inbox from a band called Dead Confederate. I was like, hey, something like, hey, I like your music, we, we should play together sometime or something like that. And I was like, I clicked on Dead Confederate's MySpace profile and uh, <laughs> I, I really enjoyed what I heard. So, you yeah, know, we set up a show kind of immediately after that happened and then uh, I don't know, we all just kind of understood each other. The wonderful friendship had blossomed uh, really fast. Hardy and I have had a lot of fun with uh, Diamond Rugs. It's a fun way to, to write songs and record them and not have to take them too seriously because it's kind of like, you know, we're moonlighting. You know, it's not our day job, Diamond Rugs, you know. <laughs> Dirvana was always just for fun. We started to get offers from people to play shows, and they'd be offering us more money than Deer Tick ever made. <laughs> it all started because uh, a friend of ours in Rhode Island um, asked if we would do it for his birthday party. It just kind of spiraled out of control from there. I have a lot of autobiographical kind of songs, and then I have a lot of works of fiction. But um, wherever it comes from, you know, it's being filtered through me and my brain. So whatever story I'm telling, it takes a lot from my personality, you know. Fix me up now If it seems that I need fixing And correct me if I stand to be corrected Things are great, I really can't, really can't complain, you know. I just bought a house, married, I have a dog, that's cool, you know. <laughs> it's really great, you know, to come home and have many reasons to not continue living a 24-hour party. But, uh, you know, I noticed when, you know, I cleaned up my act a bit, it was like, you know, morale had increased amongst the band members and it didn't really feel like 
didn't feel like we were gonna break up anymore, you know. <laughs> I had been offered help by many people on a number of occasions, but you know, I'd always blow people off. I wasn't ready to make any sort of changes. And I really didn't think I was doing myself any harm for a while, you know. When I met my wife, Vanessa, I could kind of see things through a pretty realistic uh, filter, through all the, you know, alcohol and drug haze that was, you know, around my head. <laughs> she gave me all the support I needed and she didn't, she never told me to do anything. I wanted to change for her and because I had met her and she was just there, you know, to support me, but didn't push anything. She was out there visiting me while we were working on the record, and I had that song in our time written all from one person's point of view, and it was just sung by one singer. I wanted her to sing on the record and do something, and then I thought that that song would work out as a duet. And I wouldn't even have to change any of the words, you know. It's just by having a different voice, suddenly you have two characters, you know. And yeah, it just kind of worked out perfectly. You show me how to die. I guess I'll catch you on the other side. We have a good amount of time off these next few months. So we're just kind of all individually just writing our stuff and getting things together and then Hopefully we'll be back in the studio around October with the idea that we'll just kind of record demos for everything and then figure out what we want to do with it, where we want to record it, etc. Hey, I'm John McCauley. Look for me on Last FM. <laughs>